Namaskar, hello to everybody, and uh, welcome to the last evening of the series of five conversations, Dance Across Genres. This has been organized by uh, Art Vision in collaboration with the India Habitat Center on the occasion of the fifth, 25th celebration of Art Vision. Art Vision was founded in 1996 by a group of artists belong to different disciplines like art, dance, literature, theater, uh, uh, film, and just to have a common ground to share uh, creative ideas and experiences. So keeping on line with that, in line with that, the 25th anniversary um, is, has been celebrated by this uh, dance across genres, uh, where uh, people, artists from different disciplines are presenting their talk and uh, interacting between each other. So uh, today is uh, dance and bhakti. As classical dancers, we go through years of rigorous training in a very codified and systematized grammar of the body with precise rules pertaining to each movement. Every gesture has to be executed in a particular way and has a specific meaning and no deviation is tolerated. It is through this codified language that we express devotional longings and we offer our prayers to the Almighty. How different is the expression of devotion through dance and songs for a bowel practitioner? What is it that dictates the way her body moves while singing the devotional songs? So this is something which is going to be addressed tonight by our dear Parvati Paul. And uh, she is of course very well known, doesn't need much introduction, but just let me tell you that uh, she is uh, of course, a practitioner, but also a teacher from the Baal tradition. The Baal tradition of Bengal is deeply rooted in Gyan Bhakti and yoga through music incorporated with dance. Parvati took her initiation and train under Sampanna Guru Sri Sanatan Das Baal and Sri Shashanka Goshai. She started performing in 2000 and has performed in more than 42 countries since then. In 1997, she co-founded Ektara Kalari in Tiruvantapuram, a space dedicated to traditional art forms and meeting of its practitioners. She founded Tanti Datri, International Women's Performing Art Festival in India in 2012. And she founded also Sanatan Siddhashram in Birbhum district in Bengal a traditional Baal Gurukul dedicated to Baal learning. 
In 2019, she was awarded with the prestigious Sangeet Natak Academy Awards. So now, before giving the word to Parvati, I would like to ask you to, um, of course, mute your mic uh, in between in, in, uh, while she's talking. But then, at the end of her presentation, uh, we are uh, will all be very happy to have your uh, uh, questions, which you can put in the chat box, or if you want to come on the screen, just raise your hand and we will unmute your mic. So now. To you, Parvati. Jai Guru, Jai Guru, Jai Guru, Iliana. Thank you for having me. It is always a delight to be with you. To, Thank you. To have in your, there is something special in your presence, your energy, and all the dedication and love towards the Indian dance, bhakti, and spirituality the way you have adapted all the teachings of your guru is so inspiring. So it always fills my heart meeting you. So thank you to spend this little time with you. And uh, before I start to talk about bhakti in the dance or dancing bhakti, I offer my humble prayer to all my gurus Sanatan Raj Babul, Shashanka Bashai, and also Ravi Gopalan Nair, who actually has trained me for a long time. And um, before anything else, I would like to remember Parama Guru Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who showed us the path of dancing bhakti. So in the first sloka, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu lived a long life. He lived in Jagannathapuri temple and he often would sing and dance. And his dance was soaked in bhakti and it invoked the rasa of devotion in all his listeners and in all of the people who were listening to him. So, in the first sloka, so eight verses that we find of him. And he tells us why he sing and dance. So in the first part verse, it goes like this. Oh, Sri Sri Guru Padu of the heart, the mirror of the heart, which has accumulated dust over the years. To clean that dust of the mirror of the heart, I sing and dance. I sing and dance because it rises the moon 
of the supreme wisdom steals the devotion inside. I sing and dance because it grows my joy more and more, more and more. Let this Sankirtana of Sri Krishna has, have the victory over every heart. Let it touch the hearts of those who are suffering, those who are in happiness, those who are in isolation, those who are in the celebration of togetherness, everyone equally. Baul Parampara, before it came into the Vaishnava Parampara, it was a Natha Siddha tradition, which is coming from the Shiva Parampara. So the dance that we have received from these masters, they were connected to grow the Shakti within the body. Shakti means the energy through the work of breath. It was dancing pranayama. And then they incorporated sound in it. The sound was not really always a music. It was sound that came from the different resonators of the body. It vibrated with the movement of the body, especially with the connection of the feet, the footwork on the ground. So it invoked, it has a direct connection to the muladhar. And from muladhar, then it, there is a passage going upward through the bed. <coughs> so for that purpose, they had incorporated dance. Mm -hmm. So you said, if you sit and do pranayama, what happens? Of course, you can sit and do pranayama. But when you are dancing, the whole body is in movement. Your breath is in movement. So the mind starts to become still. The mind starts becoming quiet. And then it becomes focused in this meditation. So the bowel dance that we see today, it is actually a meditation in motion. And uh, so this, only when the Vaishnava Parampara came into the bowel sphere, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu introduced the Bhakti Rasa. Then it, it brought the beauty or the aesthetics. Then it became music, poetry, dance, movement, everything together. But what you really experience looking at the bowl is this, this movement that's happening within, which is a dance, you can call the dance of the bowl. It is, it is very spontaneous. It's just happening out there. And like other dance forms, you know, you have to fix a score because there is a musician, there is certain story and everything. We also have that the story, but it is not fixed. Every time you sing the song, the dance will change and you don't really know what will happen, but it doesn't mean that you don't need to train. <laughs> there is a lot of training and a lot of fixed elements there in the bowl dance the, but the only thing is that when you do it you are totally blank you're like a totally blank canvas and then you grow your dance through your music since you're not dependent on other musicians mm -hmm. you can very easily find the bhava of the song within your body mm -hmm. so first come the bhava first you sing then come the bhava and then come the dance. So you start singing and you get into, and who has a long years of practice, who has repeated these songs again and again, just with the twang of ektara or just with the sound of the ektara, they're immediately inside the song. So it doesn't take much time to start dancing with the song because they know the song so well. So first is the song. Then comes bhava, and then starts the movement of the dance. So here I will share 
before I go into anything else, I will just show you a video of one of the performance of me. I did it in Bergamo, Italy, uh, in the Teatro di Cascabile, where I am singing and dancing. It has a several movement, so maybe it will help you to see the dance of the bowl.
my teacher was very much against recording, writing down, notebooks. We have learned directly. Oh, oh, I have to stop that video. One second. By listening to the very As you can see, I'm not a super technician, anyhow. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, in this in this one, this song that you can see, I mean, all the movement is not there, but basically some of it is there. I will request to open all of your videos so that I can see you. Those who are in a very strange circumstance, you don't have to. But <laughs> if you <laughs> if you are not then please open. Uh, and uh, so basically the dance that you have seen in that, it is not choreographed, yet it has a very specific, uh, specific way of movement. So how we start our training is that for personally, if I say, I started dancing very early in my life. My first training, I took my training from the age of three. Like I hardly could walk and I fell down often while dancing. Because my father says to me that my first word was to him was like, uh, I want to dance is before I say anything else, like I want food or water. So, so this was my first word to him. And, uh, I first studied Kathak, and my guru is uh, Shilekha Mukherjee. She's a very well-known guru in Kolkata. And I've studied with her for until age of 16, when I decided to explore more and more things. I became a very uh, rebellious child in a way. So I wanted to break away from everything. And <laughs> so uh, I took visual art. So then uh, for me, when I came to Baul, I discovered dance in a very different way. Previously, when I was uh, working with the dance, I had the rhythmic patterns. I had a very fixed way of, you know, the talas and also the discipline of Kathak. And there was a part of storytelling also in it which actually helped me to understand Babu dance or practice it. But when I came to the Baul, I understood the body in a completely different way. And uh, for me, I had to start from my standing first. And every movement that I was doing, more than the beauty of it, more than the how precision is the step or anything, the main focus of the teacher was on the breath. Where is your breath? So breath came first to enhance the breath, then came the dance. So we, when we start, we don't learn choreography, but we have certain ways which we call kriya. And this kriya are the specific movement, movement with breath. Uh, I will share my uh, screen once again to show you a short, very short glimpse of one of the kriya, which I was doing in one of the workshops. Usually these kriyas are not documented that much because they are not supposed to be seen, but <laughs> is uh, the filmmaker was clever. So since it is there, I will show you one second. You can see, I hope. Yeah. My teacher was very much against recording, writing yes. down, notebooks. You have to learn directly from him. He would sing 
to follow the words and you must remember when it's the next by listening with it very good very strong very attentive that because i can't miss at any word it is a short one because he was not supposed to tell so there are certain kriyas like that which is specific movement but you could hear that i was asking to inhale exhale inhale exhale so it is a very much connected deeply connected with the breath we practice everything separately we work with the dance in this way and then we work with the music separately and then the instrument the coordination of instrument separately then we incorporate everything together that's how we work with the dance and the music so uh, there was um, my my teacher you know uh, we we never had any kind of uh, very formal training in the sense i would follow my master everywhere and he will suddenly start singing and dancing and say follow me maybe you are in the middle of the field and rice field and we are going for it because we are we are follow a spiritual path we have to do bhiksha like the buddhist monks so we go for bhiksha from village to village singing and suddenly in the middle of the field he will get into the this mud water uh, of the rice field and place his uh, feet and he will ask me lift it up place it back lift it up place it back like that he would train me to say that you need a light feet the bowl has light feet so you must experience first how heavy it is and for that he would take me to the rice field <laughs> so his teaching was in this way and then another time when you know we dance with nupur so this nupur that we receive it is a very special occasion with the guru he he gives the nupur only i mean anybody can buy a nupur from the shop but when you receive it from the guru mm. it is a very special thing it's like he is giving you the authority to dance after him follow his path mm. take his footstep so to practice we we it's not a gumburu nupur is like anklets so this anklets you must have seen the dance of oracles in uh, like in khayam or in the uh, the the oracles in the temples of south india they also wear this kind of chelambo and the most beautiful dance i have seen with the chelambo is uh, in the kannagi temple where men and women they wear this chelambo and they have this dancing with the a certain kind of singing and they are in a total trance so you see baul is a is a borderline between this trance and transmission baul has a different function it is the the person who is dancing he is experiencing some kind of things that's for sure the one who is watching is also experiencing something when i say something it means this transcendent they feel that there is feeling but at the same time the bowl is completely aware because they have to uh, transmit the wisdom of the song they cannot forget their lines they cannot uh, and they have to be in contact with the audience who is in contact uh, and have also have to like communicate so whatever this experience is happening is also part of this whole thing like singing dancing and the uh, instrument and this experience of the otherness that is also inside this is also part of it yet it is not expressed fully so there is a complete it's like the how you control your body as dancer you don't overdo with your emotion you don't overdo with your body everything you know how much you lift your hand maybe it, it this much lifting it dies it is more effort but how much you lift which becomes very expressive so that we, when with the emotion it is like that you don't have to like overdo things even with the spiritual experience you don't have to go trance you know 
you can hold it. And that's the control you learn with the breath and the movement. This is the control you learn. So there was another, I, I will not, I already I hit the clock. It is already 9.32. I want to. <laughs> no, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. I want to show you because Ileana was asking me if I have worked with dancers, other form of dancing. Yes, I have done a lot. And uh, I have been always fascinated by the dance and dance, different kinds of dance. And um, it's not like anybody dance, one who has that real experience, those dancers. Mm -hmm. So here is a one clip I want to show because she said that it will take me three minutes. I worked with a contemporary dancer from Australia. Her name is Naren Benjamin. Very, very fantastic dancer she is. And then one Sri Lankan dancer, her name is Ananda Bandi. So we worked in Australia. So there is a good video of this. So I'll share my screen again. And you can see that how we incorporated, because storytelling is also part of the power. So, so there is storytelling, the dance, and the music together. We have not used anything from our outside. No recorded music, no other musician. We did everything ourselves. We make, created, even Naril created uh, the beat with her body, which is not in the video maybe, but it was very beautiful. I will just share this. Thank you. 
Okay. So, I open up the session with questions. Oh, <laughs> okay. I think there are some. Uh, well, uh, I was so engrossed, I thought you would continue. <laughs> so, no, I, I was wondering. Um, uh, net, uh, the the Katak uh, training that you had before uh, in your previous avatar, um, it, yeah, it must have uh, helped a lot uh, in terms of uh, sense of Tala and also, I suppose, the, uh, yeah, the control over the footwork and the uh, whirling movements. So I think, uh, I think that uh, um, it must have, uh, I mean, it, it, we can see that, uh, that it's, there is a training behind and uh, that is, uh, and uh, also I wanted to ask, but when you say that, um, yeah, when you sing and perform, you are uh, uh, totally gross and gross in your uh, bhav, but also you cannot overstep because uh, uh, you, you, you cannot go into a trance because you don't have to forget that you are also transmitting. But it never happened actually that you did you, you went into to a trance. It never happened in any of the um, of the um, your performance to to forget where you were. Uh, yes, to be honest, yes, it happened. But in my initial years, when I was having my experience for the first time. And I remember I was dancing and singing in Calicut. It was raining outside and it was pretty cold inside. It was a air conditioned hall, but I started experiencing fire in my body and my whole body was uh, Anand, where is he? Can you please switch off your, you can you mute yourself? Yeah, mute yourself please Anand, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Problem. All right. So yeah. then uh, we, uh, you know, and then I experiencing this fire inside my body, and it was, uh, yeah, it was in a different realm al almost altogether because the the audience and everything vanished. Mm. It was this tremendous suffering with my body, and then there was something that. And when I finished my singing, I don't remember the lines, but they said that I did finish my singing. Mm -hmm. And then when I came down, I could not recognize anybody. I just, but I smiled and I ran to my uh, green room and I closed myself mm -hmm. because it took me long. And then I kept on pouring water in my body. It cooled mm -hmm. down. It took me almost 40 minutes to mm -hmm. come down. So this was, but this is very initial years because I was very new to this, all these experiences. Mm -hmm. But now all of this, even if something happens, it's very little, nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> now you are an exper experienced performer. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, it's yeah. like when the mother first birth they give, it's a mm -hmm. lot of pain. But when you have eight children, you don't feel anything anymore. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. One birth happens. So, <laughs> so it's like that, I think. <laughs> yeah, experience uh, teaches. So uh, let me open the chat and see. I'm sure there must be. Uh, Guru, Guru can. Okay. Any specifications of any bhakti in Western dances? Okay, Biswajit Das is asking if there is any specification of any bhakti in Western dances. Well, I am not an expert of Western dance, so I cannot really say anything about it. But what I have seen uh, in my experience meeting the dancers, uh, my most more interaction I had with the contemporary dancers in the West. Uh, so. And I worked with very specific people, people for example, Naril herself. She is a very um, a devoted yoga practitioner, very spiritual mm -hmm. person. And she incorporates, I mean, she, you can never see her training. This is another mastery of a dancer, not to show the training behind. Mm -hmm. Because what you present is like, my Guruji used to say, you cook and serve very beautifully. Don't show your kitchen because it's a mess. <laughs> so this, all this training that you have inside, 
you don't show it out to people. Mm -hmm. You don't need to, because if I start explaining all the things that we go through, it takes away that magic. So this is why master used to say, <laughs> and <laughs> it's rigorous in a way. So Nadal is a practitioner, and she her movement that you can see that is a lot of influence of yogic postures in her, even though she is in a dynamic uh, position. And so there are dancers who have inspired a lot from the martial arts of India and all of that. And along with that, along with this kind of body practice, because all of this work. Uh, be it yoga or be it martial art, uh, the inner, you know, if you try to get into the precision of any of Indian art, you, you need to have the spiritual context. You need to have that understanding of Shastra. You need to have understanding of scriptures and the depth. Because for a, for a uh, practitioner, you know, in, in Kalari Paiti, they, when they learn, they said, we are not learning to fight. We are learning to know the body. And to, to become the master. And they are great healers because they know the marmam so well that they can easily heal people who come with some fracture or something like that because they can also heal themselves. So all of that is included. We have, in the, in the modern world, what is the problem of us? On <laughs> divided. Side? Is that we have divided everything. Hold on a second. If you want to be a dancer, Odyssey dancer, for example, I'm taking with permission of Indian English. It is not on the stage that life ends. If you want to grow your art, if one wants to grow one's art, and if one wants to really enjoy and have the complete rasa of Odyssey dance, one needs to pray to Krishna, to Devi. To, because this visualization, when you are in connection, yesterday, one of the Damodar Goshai, one of our very great teacher of Baul was, we had a satsang and he was saying that the moment you can see Krishna as a relative, because he is the ultimate light and we all came from him. It's like if you light one lamp, then you can light many other lamps. Similar way, he is the one who is the Pita or the Srishtikarta, the creator. And then we all have come from him. And the moment we recognize that we are nothing but his incarnation, you will dance only for that. There will be this fulfillment, the joy. Well, how come the spiritual practitioners are so happy, even in the worst condition? It's just because they have only seen the divine. And they have done japa and dhyana. That is the tool. But for a dancer, the tool is the body. This every movement, if it led towards the divine, every action, if it led to the divine, it will bring that samadhi, the, 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 the experience of samadhi, experience of ananda within. It is not you have to sit in a cave. You can just dance and the divine will be there. So this is my, my feeling about dance. So for me, I don't see, so I am sure that when we hear about Nijiniski and uh, the kind of the, I mean, there is one in one book I had written, uh, I, had, I had read that he used to jump high and then land slowly. Okay. I mean, who can do that? One who is a master of breath. So he had this inner, and then at the end, they said that he went crazy and he was in asylum. And I completely believe he was a must because he worked with his breath so much. He went into the state of must. The must people are also like you have seen in the Mehel Baba and all of them is that they go into a kind of realm where they it looks very different than all of us who is in this yeah. business. Or even how you see the Guruji movement, how it was incorporated later into the theater work, into the dance work of many people. Mm -hmm. So 
there has been the element of spirituality in Western dance as well. And if there is no devotion, there is no spirituality, for sure. <laughs> yeah, the, it may be not uh, a God uh, uh, image, the, the iconographic uh, uh, of a God, but uh, that uh, involvement and that, uh, yeah, that is for surely there in, in, in many artists' life, uh, intense life of many artists, uh, uh, we can see it. And, uh, and may maybe those are, uh, are actually the one which they don't live long <laughs> because it, it is, it's, they are more difficult, it's more difficult to adjust to this world when, when you are too much uh, spiritual oriented. So, so it's, it's possible that. Uh, we have any other uh, uh, question? Otherwise, uh, um, yeah, also the, the circular movement, uh, it was very interesting to see. And also to relate to uh, the, the Sufi movement, for example. And uh, so I think uh, the, the circularity, um, which is like the, uh, the circularity of the, the art and the, the circumvolution of the, of the temple. And so all, all this uh, um, goes uh, around the center. So that I, I suppose that is uh, to, to the, the, the meaning of this, uh, why is so much associated with the, all these um, ecstatic and spiritual type of dances. So I saw that in, uh, in, the, in, in your dance also is very much part of, of uh, probably of the training, uh, apart from the foot, the footwork, which takes the energy from the art, but also the circular movement. So um, I think those, these are, if I understood properly, these are two elements which um, uh, are part of the training. Um, of, of your uh, of your training dance in dance so we have training with uh, basically the yoga is very much part of our training mm. we all bow masters they as they're part of the training they have to have this hatha yoga practice every day okay. and and then uh, there are certain work with the body which is connected to the alchemical work and uh, like it's, it's part of the practice. And then we have, if I go directly to the dance, there will be this footwork. That is one aspect. Then the movement. And the, because the, the work with the foot and, and the movement, they are two different elements. The footwork, it is the, uh, the movement of the fire. And the, uh, uh, sorry, the movement of the? the footwork, movement of the fire. Fire. So it, mm. Yeah, it will increase the Shakti Shit. in the body. Mm. Shakti means that's Muladhara Shakti. Mm. And then uh, the, the movement that is flowing, like moving to different direction, that comes as the element of water. Water. Mm. Yeah. And, and then the, the spinning that you see, that is a practice is a movement of akasha mm. so with that the more you do that movement you very naturally very naturally you can do it yourself or those who have been whirling all the time they will know so <laughs> what happens is this uh, the air goes upward mm. and the mind also goes upward and then what we create is the sense of space because, you know, in one of the Charyagiti in, in Kanupad says, Kanupad is the one of the 84 Siddhas, the Nathya Siddha, yes. Bodha Siddha. And he says, there is a world beyond this world we cannot see. Like the butter is hidden in the milk. Similar way, there is an invisible world beyond this world. So the work of a Baul dancer is to be in that world. Mm. So it is a connecting point. All these Kriyas, is a connecting a gateway to that invisible world mm -hmm. because they they have to manifest that that thing you know because Baul is talking about this spirituality and you have to manifest the bhava my master used to say shanatan bhava that if you if you yourself understand the song very well if you really see the song very well then the person who's listening to you also will understand 
But if you yourself is not clear about the meaning, not clear about the bhava, they also will not be clear as simple as that. So for that reason, if we talk about this otherness, then we need to we need to cultivate that inside us. If we sing of bhakti, we need to cultivate bhakti inside us. Complete surrender. And that is not only in the in the for a baul, it says the nataka, nirvana nataka, we call it. The theater of nirvana. So the theater continues 24 hours. A moment is not left without surrender. This surrender is not an expression just outside. It has to be inside. It has to go inside. It has to manifest every 24 hours, even while one is asleep then only the dance is complete mm. even in the in the sleep one is conscious of this surrender yeah. one is awake with the surrender mm. then only the dance will get complete we have to go to that perfection <laughs> we call it siddhi but siddhi is not something that you walk on the water or you jump into fire siddhi mm. is this inner perfection this complete awake a wakefulness. So your gurus are um, are no, no more alive now. The two gurus which were that, they're in that invisible world. So they are no. very much there, more there than before. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I feel all the time their presence. When I um. sing and dance, I feel them. I live in the time. So when I see the children whom I saw, you know, 10 years ago in the village and they come by and I say, oh, so many years passed. <laughs> so I'm still there with my guru. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there is somebody raising their hand. Chitra Dasarati. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, namaste. Um, I just wanted to um, say today you mentioned about uh, the movement of the fire and the akasha and uh, the, how the water, how the body becomes almost those elements. Um, I was just reminded of uh, I heard you sing Lolite uh, Kinam Shonaili, and there is a cadence that you sing in that in which you Lolite you. You are on a high note, and then you kind of glide down towards a lower note. And in the in the process of that, um, uh, I I did experience a feeling of you know of finding that Lalita and um, the the life within that whoever that Lalita is. So, uh, and since you brought up the idea of within the movement, bringing up the uh, elements of uh, water, fire and akasha. So I just, I mean, I also feel that, you know, uh, in, in, the, in the cadence of the breath, which is released as song and music, um, the movement kind of melds. And thank you for that explanation about how the movement represents uh, these elements and then becomes part of the body. Thank you. I mean, I just... Yeah, tell me, um, complete. No, I just was, when you were saying that your voice um, of uh, Kinam Shonaili, I think the words are, I'm not, I, if I'm not saying them wrong, Lolite Kinam Shonaili, or some song like that, I do remember the, the, and that song has, and the words and the way the, the music glided down and the body moved. Um, today I found words for that from you. Thank you. Yeah. So there is something that very interesting what she has mentioned. I just wonder, it just came to my mind while listening to you. Is that uh, you see the when is a bhakti in the dance, for example. What happens that we have some kind of imagination, what is bhakti, right? That we have to show something, whatever it may be. And uh, 
we have to show this, uh, you know, this longing and this, you know, like, I, I cannot really explain, but I think you understood because we have set an idea of bhakti. But jnan bhakti, what Baul is proposing is this to hold the bhakti because bhakti is this ultimate, ultimate fruit of your sadhana, ultimate fruit of your yoga. It is the most mature state. It is complete in control. So even your you when you are going to that state, all these layers of practice, which is your kitchen basically, where you are preparing your body with the breath, with the very precise movement, with the precise uh, spinning and the voice and the rhythm. But at the at this moment of bhakti is the space of unlearning it. Mm. But you can unlearn. And you can surrender completely to the divine only when you have this surrender. Then only you can express the bhakti completely. You can really bring that element of bhakti completely. Otherwise, the bhakti will not function. Bhakti will become a very poor expression of something, you know, like some emotion. But bhakti is not just, it's a ripened, mature state. For example, you, you know, is uh, yesterday we was listening to a master, you know, with us in the in our Gurukul, and he says that in the whole Gita, Bhagavad Gita, it goes on talking in the first chap chapters about yogas and karma and about all the principles. Bhakti comes only at the twelfth chapter towards the end because he prepares Arjuna completely to be able to see. What is this complete karma? It is a highly, because people are very wrong either thinking that bhakti is something very easy. Bhavan is also called sahaj. Sahaj means something easy. It's the most difficult one. Because there is no method it can teach you. There is no way written. There is no sketch. There is no scriptures, nothing. It's a complete, mature, ripened state of pure serenity. And when that you want to bring down to your body, because this is also an ima image we have that everything is up, divine is up. No, his power said, bring it down. Make him live it up in this world, with us, in this body. And the dancing is expressing the temple is the body. So when you bring down divine in your body, then you, you need to hold that energy, that Shakti. Only with yoga, yoga will grow ahamkar, ego. The skills grow our ego, but the bhakti makes it mature. So then only this whole adhara, the body of the dancer is complete. This is why the element of bhakti is so important in all our traditions of dance, music, spirituality. Even the Vedantins, we say neti neti, there is nothing, nothing. I'm not this, I'm not that. Even they are saying that without bhakti, there is no way further. There is because there will be ahamkara. I'm not the doer. So when I let my body dance according to the tune of Krishna, the flute of Krishna, the body will dance itself. I don't have to dance. I'm taking uh, time. I'm already here. I think, I think now you have to take your uh, ektar and sip and uh, end with the... <laughs> with the, some uh, sound and voice and uh, uh, which uh, will remain for the rest of the night for, in, in all of us. Okay, so I will sing. So 
I will tell you the meaning of ekthara. So, this is ekthara. What is this meaning of this ekthara? To me, chile ekthara. You wear ekthara. Ekthara means also one star. So you wear in in the sky, in the in the layers of light, which is beyond what we call physical sky with clouds and all of that. You see. There is a beyond that, there is a plane of light from where we come and we go back. So you were one star out there and you have come. And if one can take the uh, Sharon, if one becomes, take the Sharanagati of Ekkara, one forgets the world. Which way will I know you by Ekkara? You are the most mysterious yantra. I have seen only one, one string made of wood, bamboo and leather. There is a simple bead and a copper coin. <laughs> and then you have this string. But when you play, it is like the river in the spring. If one listens to the true ekthara, then one sing in that cosmic sound. Listening to Ektara, the Fakir, Darvesh, Sai, they all left their home. It's only the path of Guru can lead us to the space of Ektara. Thank 
বাংলাদেশ হাইয়ের চরণ বক্স ভাব সর্বক্ষণ তখন খুলে যাবে তোমার সত্য সর্বদার তুমি ছিলে এক তারা হলে এক তারা ছিল নাম thank you so much so you are really precious <laughs> so much to think about so much inspiring uh, i think there is somebody who was trying to ask something um, parvati ma do you foresee starting an online dance song class in oh, the bau tradition I, i forgot to say that so there is an online akhara yeah <laughs> i you see this is what happens anyhow so i'll share my screen again and just show you quickly so we just launched it yesterday it is with the concept of um you know sharing an online akhara learning center so it is a you can when you click here you can you know so you can you can go into the akhara we can get into the akhara and then we can practice these songs and then we have this you know kind of a library where you can also read more about the baul work and all of that so it is a lot of exploration that can happen with the um, baul online akhara so it is a very basic uh, first page so you can go this and this is the learning center and i want to quickly show you my gurus without them everything is unfulfilled huh? so this is shanatan baba you see in the first picture he is you see how he is standing and uh, so he also he teach me dancing and then i have my guru shashank goshai who is sitting he is 99 year old in this picture Mm. and uh, he he taught me dancing by putting two bamboo poles on the side because he he needed help to stand but he used to put his you know uh, balance on the bamboo pole and show his footwork because he mm. could not stand long time on his leg so then <laughs> so he taught me dance in this way and here sanatan baba again my guru ji the first picture guru ji but he is very young perhaps younger than me in this picture and he is wearing that nupur i told you and beside him sitting his teacher his spiritual teacher manoj thapa and just beside you see the master nitai thapa who is a great 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 dancer is a legend legend is a legend of this dance and um, he taught sanatan baba dancing the last picture you can see ravi gopalan nayar who actually trained me and in the middle is the sufi master uh, abdul salam i spent 12 years with him understanding about this world of beyond what we see <laughs> beautiful so it's it's very uh, tough oh, to and iran i just take a time because i love dogs i can think stay uh, <laughs> you have a beautiful listener in the in your screen <laughs> <laughs> i can see the listener wait wait who i where <laughs> <laughs> look at this oh my okay God. yeah <laughs> wow what the eyes with yeah. the with the 
with kajal eyes with kajal yes <laughs> yeah. wow so my dear parvati it's uh, it's been uh, it's so lovely to 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 hear from you and to meet and to to connect uh, so i i think on behalf of all of uh, all of them all of you <laughs> i am really very very much uh, thanking you and uh, with i mean uh, it's not easy to leave you but um, i think we will have to uh, yeah uh, okay somebody else is asking next time we we'll take it next time <laughs> next time yes okay so good night to everybody and thanks again parvati thanks a lot lot of love to you yeah, Bye. thank you thank you so much parvati thank yeah. you yeah have a have a good night those who are in india and those who are in other places